Okay, guys, for the final presentation of today, so, so it's, it's going to be in charge of Juan and, and, and Rian, as I mentioned. The supervisors are Fernando Metz and Jacopo Grilli from uh, ICTP. Uh, the last one, the first one is, uh, is uh, from Brazil. Uh, and they're going to, uh, and, and Juan and Rian are going to talk about stability analysis of ecosystems with random model interaction. Please, Juan, go ahead and start. Thank you. So hello everyone, um, I am Rian and together with Duan, we will be presenting our work on the stability analysis of ecosystems with random modular interactions. And our supervisors here are Professor Fernando Metz and Professor Jacob Grilli. Um, next one, please. So for the outline our presentation, Duan, please, next. Okay. Uh, we will provide first a motivation or a background for our study. Then from these ideas and premises, we will uh, show you uh, our model for this project. Then we will show you our theoretical calculations and accompanying these calculations, we will be also showing you our, our results uh, using numerical simulations and finally wrap up everything uh, in the conclusions. Next, please. So the starting point of our project is on the population dynamics in ecosystem. So if we let uh, X sub I be the populations of species I, we can create a uh, first order nonlinear differential equation on the population of each species um, shown here. So the X, the, the X I over DT will be um, a function that is dependent also on the population of the other species since species are interacting. Like for example, in here, in this figure, you can see that the predator's population is dependent to the po population of the prey. Next, please. So in this first order nonlinear differential equation, um, we can get the uh, equilibrium points in which in this point, the function x sub i is the extremum. So this um, equilibrium points can either be stable or unstable. By stable, we mean that the equilibrium point, when you give a perturbation to the system, it will return to the original um, equilibrium point. Well, if it's unstable, it will go far away. Like, um, for example, in here, in this pendulum, um, there are two equilibrium points. But if you perturb the pendulum here, you find that the pendulum is swinging back and forth and eventually return to this equilibrium point. Well, for this um, configuration, you will never find it um, returning to this unstable equilibrium point. Um, next, please, the one. So from that, um, from that equation before, if we compile all the nonlinear differential equations for all species, we have this equation. And if we perform a multivariate Taylor and Taylor series, we can find this uh, leading term, which is a partial differentiation of all the species of the all the population species. And from this partial differential equation, we can get what is the Jacob Jacobian matrix, which is essential to linear stability analysis. So this Jacobian matrix. Um, includes all the um, change in the population of species I with regards to its interaction to population uh, to species J. And if we plug in this equilibrium points, we find this what we call a community matrix, which includes all the interaction strengths between uh, species and it con contains only constants. Next one, please. Um, so from that, by using that community matrix and we let x still be x minus the equilibrium point, we can we can find this um, first order linear differentiation, uh, the differential equation. I mean, so and in the end we we will find that we have this uh, solution for x tilde and x tilde will denote um, uh, how far through time will we uh, be um, from the equilibrium point when the system is perturbed. So as you can see, it is just a superposition of exponentials with exponents lambda t. Lambda is the eigenvalue of this um, community matrix. And by convention, we will set the this uh, convention where we arrange it according to the greatest real, uh, real component because lambda is a complex number. Next one, please. So you see, if uh, we have a lambda that is, uh, if we have a lambda that has a real part that is less than zero, we, we find the system to approach a stable uh, stable state because um, 
uh, if we break down the lambda into real imaginary parts, where the imaginary, imaginary parts will give the oscillation to the system because e to the i something is just a sine and cosine. And if e is, is raised to the negative power, you can find it that it will be decaying. So as you can see, it will approach to a certain value. While on the other hand, if um, the real part of lambda 1 is uh, greater than 0, you will find it exploding because the um, e raised to a certain exponent that is positive will just keep on growing over time. Note that um, here we used um, lambda 1 because um, as you can see, if lambda 1 is assured to be negative since it has the greatest uh, real part, then the other eigenvalue follows that they are negative. So we can be assured that the system is uh, generally stable. Otherwise, we cannot say really if it's um, stable. Uh, lambda 1, we will, coin, we will coin a term later that we will call this the rightmost eigenvalue because we, if we plot it in the real and imaginary axis, uh, part, it will be on the rightmost side of the plane. Um, next, please. Next, please. And next, so again, um, returning to, to the community matrix, um, we uh, note that it contains the interaction of the species. So this, in, this matrix can be used as an adjacency matrix for a certain network that we wish to construct. Next, please. Okay. So notice that if we use this uh, community matrix, we note that if n is very large, like for example 10,000, it will be difficult to note the interaction of each species to another species. So uh, the genius Robert may propose to use uh, random matrices as community matrix. And um, he found that in his work, the condition for stability for a generally a general and fully connected random matrix has this equation. So it means here that the stability of the system is um, related to the complexity of the network. So for example, uh, size of the matrix, if the if there are different more number species in the network, you can find that it will be more more unstable. And also the connectance of the matrix, the interaction, the number of uh, interactions in the system. And finally, the variance of the elements, the variance of the uh, elements of the matrix. Next, please. Um, one thing uh, what is powerful for uh, random matrices is that it's a uh, property called this uh, uh, on self-averaging and that if we have a random matrix with a certain structure and if we get the lambda, uh, the eigenvalues, the spectrum of eigenvalues, we can see that for 100 runs, we will find a uh, the same or um, not really the same spectrum, but somehow follows a certain behavior as long as they have the, the same structure. Uh, the same structure, And here we note that um, there is a bulk of eigenvalues here, which will be called the spectrum of the uh, absolute continuous spectrum, which will be useful later on in one's discussion. Um, next, please. But the problem of May's approach is that um, it is not quite realistic because in reality, um, ecological communities has different uh, network structures and furthermore um, the connection between nodes are not really fully connected because not really not all animals really eat all the other animals in the system so for large food webs there is actually a sparse connection between species and that's one of the questions that we one of the question that we um, would like to answer what happens if the matrix becomes sparser and uh, more structured next please so here in reality, uh, these are not all the structures, but here are some interesting structures that are present in an ecosystem. It could be modular. For example, if we have a network of a river ecosystem and a rainforest ecosystem, we know that the species inside these ecosystems interact with each other. But we also know that some animals interact with another ecosystem. So basically, uh, these two communities interact with each other. But for modular case, um, we emphasize that the connection between the uh, within the communities is uh, greater than the connection uh, the interaction between between communities 
and the opposite part of the uh, opposite version of the modular network is called the bipartite where in which the interaction between communities is greater than the interaction within communities and to the uh, very extreme case there is no interaction within the system we also find a core periphery structure in which the other other community is denser than the other and that they interact with each other next please so from these ideas we build our model and the main idea of our model is that we have two communities um, interacting within and interacting uh, interacting within and interacting with each other so we emphasize that we will be using um, directed uh, random graphs and the connection inside a community is uh, controlled by some connectivity parameter p uh, in which p is equals to c sub u sub v over n where u and v are the communities and we divide it by n to make sure that the connection is sparse so here in community one uh, it will be controlled by c11 or we will call c out one for c for community two it will be c22 or c out two then the interaction between these two two uh, communities will be controlled by c21 or c12 or ci or we will just make it ci we will just make it equal so in general uh, with this with this network structure we find a block matrix of this form so on the diagonal components of the, this block matrix is the connectivity uh, within the system and the off diagonal terms will note the connectivity uh, between the system and in general we have this formula of a in which c is the um, connectivity matrix meaning this will uh, take care of the of diagonal terms of this a and d is the self uh, regulation terms um, which will be the the whole diagonal uh, part of this uh, matrix a note that if c is entirely zero uh, we will also note that c is just zero and one and we won't put a strength on the interactions for now note that if c is entirely zero we will have only a diagonal of this uh, matrix and in this diagonal we will have a we will have their eigenvalues as its diagonal itself so we can say that um, for species that are not interacting with each other um, it is stable because uh, the eigenval the x tilde here will be e to the minus d for um, all uh, eigenvalues and it will just and e to the minus something will just decay and we note that that system is stable perhaps it it may be the reason why it is called a self-regulation term and next oh, okay so thank you Ian, for the introduction part uh, let me now introduce you to the result and discussion part um, so we build our work upon the theory um, analytical approach recently introduced by uh, Fernando and his collaborator in 2019. Uh, so the main idea of uh, his method is to consider an ensemble of uh, directed random graph, which uh, are locally chi-like. So this means that for any node uh, in the graph, uh, his local neighborhood look like a cheese. And then uh, using this kind of chi-like, locally chi-like structure, um, one important uh, observation is that if you remove any of the nodes in the graph, for instance, if I remove the node J here, I will decouple the dynamic of the species uh, in the neighborhood of, the, of this node J. So for example, if I remove J, the dynamic of L, K1 and K2 become uncoupled. And this means that I can cheat it, uh, the eigenvector centrality for all the node L, K1, and K2 uh, as a statistically independent variable, independent and random variable. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> and so Fernando has derived this um, general formula in which uh, RJ is an uh, eigenvector element J. Um, so I is a full eigenvector and J is the J components of, of this uh, full eigenvectors. 
And then the eigenvector centrality of a node J is a uh, sum over the eigenvector centrality of all the node K belonging to the R component of J's. And the R component of the node J's is determined uh, as a set of all the node K which receive a link, a directed link from J's. So, and then what we wait the contributions by the factor of one over Z plus D, where this is uh, be, belong to the complex plane, but does not belong to the continuous part of the spectrum. So the main um, point uh, when we introduce this formula is we, we will um, try to find the non-trivial solution of this set of uh, recursive uh, formula. So this is a basic analytical tool we will apply in, in our study. Let now specify what we, we need to know in our model. So as uh, Rian has uh, so uh, to you, actually for a node belonging to one of the two company community, for instance, a node one, uh, the, the node that I highlighted now here, uh, it can have one link to a node uh, belong to the same community, but also link to the node belong to different committee. Um, so this means that we, uh, since we have two communities, we can split up the eigenvector into two parts, R1 and R2, and for the eigenvalue, eigenvector value of any node in the first communities, uh, we need to take care of the two contributions. Well, the first one from the node belong to the same committee as this node, and the second one from the node belonging to different committees. So with that in mind, we can write out this set of two equations, uh, which are coupled together because you can see that as a, uh, I show in the previous slide, you have the term, which coming from the contribution of the node belonging to the same committee as uh, the node J here, and also the uh, contribution coming from the different committees. So uh, we are interested in finding the non-trivial solution of this set of equation. And since, as uh, I note before that, uh, on, uh, in our uh, locally Chile graph, we can uncouple the dynamic of the species at different nodes, uh, thanks to the locally Chile structure. So um, we can uh, derive uh, an equation for the distribution of the icon uh, vector. And then from that equation, we can write out the uh, couple equation for the first moment. And uh, here is the equation for the average value of the eigenvector centrality for the node belonging to the first committee and likewise for the node belonging to the second committees. And now you can easily solve this equation because it's the uh, first uh, or the Lyly equation. And um, you can use the same method to derive equation for the second and the third, so on and so forth moment. They just become quite involved and complicated, so I don't solve them here. And um, so the first, uh, the non-trivial solution to the first moment equation will give you the position of the outlier. So since we have a quadratic equation, we actually have two outlier corresponding to one to plus and the second one to the minus side here from this equation. So you uh, remember that T is a diagonal term, C1 and C2 is uh, the link density as a mean the uh, degree from the second and the first committee. And, and here CI is uh, the inter committees uh, links. So um, this is for the outlier. And if you uh, aim to look for the non-trivial um, solution for the second uh, moment equation, you will find the boundary of the continuous part of the spectrum. And it look um, uh, almost the same as this equation, if you may notice, but actually the difference is here, when actually the module of this D plus D uh, square is uh, equal to the right-hand side. And um, uh, before going to the general result, let me show you some particular cases in which we verify our theoretical finding. So on the left figure, it says no zero diagonal term, and on the right, there is the D equal three. 
And <clears throat> you see that in the absence of D, uh, the system is unstable. And then that if you look at the scatter plot of the eigenvalue, uh, empirical distribution of the eigenvalue, you see that there are two outliers, the same as what we predicted. And the, the right mode eigenvalue is well positive, so that the system is unstable. And when we plug in the regularization D, we can see the spectrum towards the left and um, make it stable. And the theoretical finding, you also agree with the simulation. So the thick line here is what we calculated from our um, theory. And, and uh, the second uh, case is we look at is the core periphery network. Actually in the core periphery network, was the result are quite similar to the two modular network. The only difference is for the core peripheries, one of the two committees are densely connected. So this is why you observe more or less the same uh, uh, figure as uh, so the last one. But more interestingly is when you look at the bipartite structure. So for the bipartite structure, you set um, on C, uh, one and C2 equals zero and you uh, only introduce a link between communities. And now you can see that uh, there is one outlier on the right most, um, the right most eigenvalue, and another outlier which now like uh, behind the moon of the spectrum. So it's quite interesting compared to the core periphery and the modular. And so now, since you have based some impression of what the spectrum and how the system stable and unstable under some condition, uh, some particular condition of the parameter of the model, I will show you the general result that we obtained during this project. So first we get um, stability instability diagram. So uh, in this diagram, we plot um, on the x and y axis the value of C1 and C2, and we made the contour plot for different value of CI. So going from CI equal zero to here CI equal three. And um, uh, the region uh, uh, above any of this curve is indicating this is unstable and below the curve is unstable, uh, is stable phase. So this means that uh, as long as you increase CI, you swing the stability regions. So for uh, CI equal three, the, the stability region is just uh, this one and on the um, outer part of the parameter space, just unstable, giving you an unstable system. Um, and another interesting feature that we see is from our analytical calculation, um, we predict that uh, depending on C1 and C2, so if we take C1 as a function of C2, let's say, uh, we, we need to, uh, we necessarily observe a nonlinear dependent between C1 and C2 on the boundary uh, of the stable and unstable system transition. And so the theory agree with the experiment numerical simulation here. And uh, oh, another important feature that we also managed to look at is uh, uh, another type of transition. This time is a transition of the spectrum, uh, of the topological structure of the spectrum itself. So um, I think that in all the previous slides, clear to you that uh, well, typically we observe um, kind of continuous spectrum, the boundary, right, uh, with the densely uh, located uh, eigenvalue and an outlier. But um, that continuous spectrum actually can only exist above some uh, critical value of the C1 and C2, given some uh, constant value of CI. So for example, here, if I set CI equal one, on this part have continuous spectrum, but below this line, below this uh, uh, rectangular shape here, you will have the discrete spectrum. And uh, to give you an impression of how the spect uh, discrete spectrum can look like, this is uh, what I plotted here for a very simple system in which on C1, C2, and CI is set equal to 0 0.5. And the system actually consists of a set of discrete points uh, located at random, uh, but you don't see any kind of uh, dense continuous part of spectrum anymore. And actually when we look at CI equals zero, so 
Uh, this means that the transition happened with C1 equals C2 equal one, um, or either C1 equal one and C2 equal zero and vice versa. This means that this uh, boundary of the uh, transition between two types spectrum actually identical to the population threshold. Uh, so this is quite interesting to observe. And uh, now we will combine uh, what we obtain from the stability instability analysis and the um, discrete and continuous spectrum transition. And we combine them into, um, into one single um, phase diagram and we plot it for two different value of uh, D. And first of all, we should remark that the discrete and continuous transition, uh, continuous spectrum transition does not depend on the value of the diagonal term. So it's, um, it's all up here, here and, and you see here in, the, in this space diagram, but the uh, stability, stability region does depend on the value of D. So in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the left phase, when this small, the stable phase, just this small region and all the rest are unstable. But when you increase D, of course, you can uh, make the system more stable and, uh, and this is why the unstable regions become uh, smaller. So uh, let me close with some conclusion and, and the future directions that we would like to go further. Um, so in our work, we have uh, found the analytical result regarding the condition for the existence of the gap between the outline and the wound. And secondly, we find the condition under which the system is stable. And the most important finding is we are able to show that modular structure is more stable than the core periphery one. And for future work, uh, we would prefer to go to uh, study a uh, phenomenon of localization, the eigenvector, or to study a generalization of our setting now. So we have only two community, but it's quite natural to consider uh, many more um, communities. And we also can try to uh, extend our approach to more general cases of uh, ensemble of weighted and degree correlated graph. So thank you for your attention and thank you uh, Fernando and Jacopo for supervision and the school organizer for giving us an opportunity to study this interesting topic. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Duan, and thank you, Rian, uh, for this uh... Actually, very nice presentation. Again, a very interesting project in, indeed. So we have time, five minutes or so, for uh, for questions. So colleagues and students, you know the drill. Just unmute the microphone and ask directly. Or raise your hand. I mean, but if you raise it, I might not see it. Questions? I have one question. Can you go one slide uh, back? There was something that, uh, since I'm, you know, uh, jiggling with many laptops and desktops and right. So it was not clear uh, for me this diagram what the different regions represent. Can you repeat to me again, please, very briefly? Uh, so, yes. So I, <clears throat> let, let me just clarify that below this dashed line here is a stable region, and uh, above it is unstable, and uh, the yellow here is a discrete spectrum case and above this this line is a continuous spectrum case uh, okay but uh, uh but the the, the 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 transition to stability to non-stability is is the is the dash line yes it's a dash that... line it's a dash okay, okay, line okay. Right? So, so so simply is that the mechanism let, let, no let's let's, let's sorry what's going on? i think it's it's just 3 30, and I have emails saying, Oh, well done, Camille. I'm going, uh, Well done, what? Sorry, there, there is, I'm not sure whether it, uh, Alex is there's some noise or somebody wants to to contribute to the discussion. I, I'm not entirely sure either. I thought it was just noise, so I've muted it. But if, okay, if the person you. wants to come back on because they're making a contribution to the, the school, then they can. 
Okay, okay. So, so, so sorry again. So, so then to one, the, the, the transition line from stability to non stability, what's stable is the dash line. Yes, is a dash then, line. Yes. And then the continuous line is just simply that the mechanism it's, is different. I mean, the spectrum changes from continuous to discrete, and then this is the discrete part. Okay, very yeah. good. Uh, excellent. More questions? If not, uh, last thank to Anna and Rian and the supervisors for this fantastic job. Thank you very much, guys. Excellent.